morning. This is Nathan Keller. Welcome back to Gravity. Uh, I've got someone special on Facebook Live with me this morning. I got my man, John Jewell. Say hi, John. Hi, Nathan. You won't ever do it, will you? You will never do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to have you on this morning, and um, I know that uh, it's busy, and I know you're you, you just look so awake. Um, <laughs> did you did you did you drink your coffee? I had a couple of cups. It's I may need to have one more before well, it's over with today. I, I'll tell you, um, you know, like Johnny Carson and and Jimmy, what's his name? Jimmy Fallon. They got like these coffee cups they give people. And they can all drink it together, right there yeah. on stage. That's right. I should have sent one sent to you, and it'll just be a styrofoam cup, and it'll be like, I don't know, Malawi or something. Well, just knowing that you're about 35, 40 minutes down the road, I feel like I could reach out and grab it. There's something <laughs> different about this, this Here. exchange. Here, grab it. Grab it. Can you grab it? <laughs> All right. Okay, good. Man, it's good to have you this morning. Uh, I've been looking forward to this. And uh, I, a lot of people, i got to tell you, uh, Sanago came up to me. Um, and they were saying things like, you know, it's really neat to see those interviews. And so people are watching these, which is what we want. We want people to watch these. We want to bring more um, attention to the work that you guys are doing. Um, but uh, right now, um, you are not in Africa. Um, and then some people may not understand that. You're currently sitting, what are you, on a Lazy Boy or a couch? I, I'm in a nice, comfortable chair in Boyd, Texas. <laughs> Woo! Boy, Texas, absolutely, that is awesome. Uh, and so you are now on what we call furlough. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, what are you doing on furlough? First of all, uh, how long are you on for I, furlough? Yeah, it's, it's a funny thing. You know, you can, you can even with social media's advances and, and the great communication that we have, the fact that you can pretty much pick up a phone and call me in Africa, there's nothing better than than face to face contact, and that will be the way it is, I think, till the end of the age. Mm. And so we're just trying to meet with as many people as we can and just tell them about what God's doing in Malawi, and you know, um, help them to see how, help them to see the miracle of God that He could take a couple of unqualified people mm. and and do what He's already done in a very short period of time. So yeah. we're we're just here getting you know making people aware, uh, eating a lot <laughs> with, with people. There's some great food and some great cooks in Texas. Yes. And, and we've already discovered that. And you're already starting to gain weight or what? Uh, well, I, I have to be. There's no way I couldn't be. I haven't checked. I'm, I'm too, uh, I'm, 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 I don't want to check. You're self-conscious. I that. Sure. Uh, there's too much to go, too many houses that we have to go to. So John, just leave it to me. Next time I see you, I'll let you know. That's that's the primary mission. So, uh, But in, in addition, you know, we're, we're hitting doctor's appointments and dentists and uh, eye doctors and, you know, getting checkups. Samantha's got a dermatology appointment. So several different things that we've got to take care of on this trip. Dennis did a great job. Your teeth look great. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well, going to smile really big. Yeah, that's right. Well, you know, um, when you were talking about we're just unqualified, how could God do that? You know, uh, it reminds me of a lot of stories in the Bible. Um you know, one of my favorite stories right there, John, is is whenever uh, we see uh, the prophet looking for the next king to replace Saul. Saul was really, really tall. And uh, he's looking at all these, these brothers of David. And he's like, oh, that one's tall. He's like, no, it's not that one. And ends up being the shortest runt of the litter. Yeah. Um, you know, God continues to do that. But I think that truly glorifies him, doesn't it? Um when you see people who, uh, number one, aren't qualified by worldly standards, and number two, I love this, this is probably even better, they feel they're unqualified. They're humble yeah. in it, and I, I love that. Well, uh, how long did you say you're in for furlough, though? Uh, we're here for a couple more months, so right around the first of, of the year, we'll go back. January 2nd, I think, mm -hmm. is what you said. Um, so... You have been at our church. You preached Sunday. By the way, I heard nothing but good stuff. Um, and I, I, I thought it was a great message. Um, and uh, I've heard you before. 
You know, I there's a spirit of God with you when you preach, and I love that. Um, you you went and you talked to Southside Church of Christ, I think, and and then you you got someplace. Where are you going in the United States? Because I know that you're traveling through states while you're here. Yeah. Um... Our next, uh, well, we'll actually meet with another church this coming Sunday, and then um, there's a, several individuals and at least one church in Nashville that we'll have to go to. Um, there's actually a church that, um, that we met through Sonago in Colorado that we're going to try to visit as well. So, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, there's, it's it's a circuit, and uh, sometimes I, I Freudian slip and call it a circus. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but uh, but it's a good thing. All of it's really good, and it's very encouraging. And if I had, you know, it makes me want to hit the gym more because I think I need to build up my stamina for these kinds of, <laughs> these kinds of um, seasons. But because it's all it's all very good. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I think it's just uh, when we think about what we're capable of, I don't think that uh, we are truly capable. It kind of goes back to that being. Uh, you know, unqualified. Uh, physically, I think we're unqualified to be able to do the kind of work that we do, but for God and Christ that's working in our lives. That's really what makes the change in our lives to be able to do those things. Um, when you guys are going around traveling the, the states, are you planning on taking the kiddos anywhere to say anything? Is there anything you got in the, in the plans? Well, you know, um, they really, they've gotten to go to, um, several sleepovers already. Mm -hmm. Um, they're catching up with their friends, which is Good. really the top of the agenda and more than just wanting to see geographical sites or, you know, go and get downtime, uh, you know, they're, they're wanting to get encouraged and refreshed and reconnect as much as anybody else. So we're just trying to, um, you know, make, give them opportunities to do that. And mm -hmm. certainly, um, Colorado will be that same thing. They've got family there that they haven't seen cousins. Uh, Nashville's the same way. We lived there for about 10 years, so Jonah and Andy both have good friends there. Uh, that's the part, you know, when we ask them, what are you looking forward to the most, that's that's what always uh, comes at the top of the list. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what, uh, John, you're pretty cool, but uh, your wife and your children are what make you, you know. And I, I'll tell you I what, I, I've heard yeah. that so many times myself, so I can say that from experience. Um, that, uh, that is a case, man. Our, our families are, are what we cherish the most. And I'll tell you what, you got three great kiddos. Um, and I like giving them a hard time, as you know. Well, thanks uh, for saying that. And I think they're great too. Um, they've, they really have made me proud this, this year, in spite of all of the challenges. And even like I've, I've, I've told you personally, there's a lot of grumbling sometimes, and that comes from all of us. Mm -hmm. Um, but at the end of, of that process, uh, there's an overcoming that I see um, them practicing. True. And, um, you know, it really is strengthening their faith. I think it's really causing them to question, you know, why are we doing what we're doing? Uh, and certainly, you know, a big part of that is seeing on a daily basis how blessed they are to just have been born mm. in the United States. Yeah. Uh, and something that they had absolutely no control over. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, it, it's an honor and, and really humbling to just watch the process happen. Yeah. Well, and I'll tell you what, uh, Ben, he's our up and coming audio visual helper. You know, he's, he, he helped me with the uh, chords there at church on that Sunday and <laughs> boy, he was a lot of help. And, uh, okay, well, that's I, good. I, and he's got his future in beatboxing <laughs> because, uh, when we set up that microphone, I was like, come on, man, give me some beatbox. But he was also humble. He's like, no, I don't know. I'm, I'm not that great. I was like, no, just, just, just a little bit. And, and he started doing a little bit and uh, I think he may have a future. You can let him know. I said oh, that. Oh boy. You know, you're a master seed planter. Uh, <laughs> That's good. Yes. Yes. Planting seeds for beatboxing. Yes. Yeah. Well, Hey, uh, a question for you. Um, you know, when you're, some people may have a mis misconception about mission work. They think whenever the missionaries are on furlough that the mission has ceased for a time. Is that the case? No, it's not. And that's one of the reasons why there was very little communication between us um, mm -hmm. the last month before we left. It was probably our busiest month that we've had since we've been there. And, you know, getting... Get, just making sure the feeding program is going to continue on. Feeding 30 individuals, kids and, and widows, every single day, making sure that there's enough food, 
uh, available, and the bigger task of really conveying to the people that are working it uh, how to do sort of what Joseph did in, in the Joseph story by storing away. And not, that's not something Malawians practice. They don't, you know, if they have it, they get rid of it. It's, it, you know, our, our practice in, in, of, of distributing at a, on a, at a responsible pace is a discipline that's practiced. Mm -hmm. So I spent a lot of time weekly leading up to this trip really helping them and trying to encourage them that come December, we need enough food to see this whole program through and not to. So, so the, here's the challenge, and I'm just going to share with you. Sure. These guys don't have just 30 orphans and widows. They have up, sometimes up to 60 or 70 kids coming to their doorstep because word is getting out, and there, mm. there's no wall to keep these people out. So mm. they're having to do the hard work of saying no to on a on a daily basis to a whole slew of people mm. uh, yeah. that are in severe need. And this is why they need their, our prayers, because uh, it's very easy when they look in their cupboard and see we've got three months of food sitting there to, to just, you know, take care of the immediate need right there. So, But they're learning, boy, in December, we're not going to have anything to give anybody. So, so that's going on right now. Today, widows and orphans are being fed in Malawi. So is it kind of like a first come, first serve? Type of thing? No, no we've got uh, we've got the thirty uh, uh, individuals picked out. Oh, okay. they're yeah, they they've been marked, if you will, and they're part of our, our preschool. Many of them are part of the preschool program too. So um, you know, we've identified who's part of the program. Uh, newcomers have been told that in January uh, we're going to expand the program to include more people. Mm -hmm. So they are not just being told no; uh, they're being told soon. Okay. Uh, you know, they just need to wait and be patient. And that's part of the reason why we're here, Nathan. We're raising money to be able to expand this program, mm -hmm. at least double it for 2019. But I would, you know, for $150 a year, you can feed one kid two times a day, two meals a day for, mm -hmm. for 150 bucks a year. Mm -hmm. So when we crunched those numbers, I thought, yeah, this is very doable. We mm -hmm. can do this. And mm -hmm. I, and I, we've already seen, you know, a, a good response. I think we're going to, we're going to see more of it. Uh, we're hopeful, and we're just walking in faith and anticipating that it's going to happen. Well, would you go into detail real quick, John, about the the food itself that you're that you're giving them, uh, so people understand mm -hmm. if they're watching this what what that buys? Yeah, so we didn't create the menu. Uh, we left that up to the Malawians to tell us what would be best mm -hmm. and uh, and certainly most cost effective. Um, everything they do is cost effective because they don't have much, so they always know how to squeeze. Not only a dollar, but a quacha. That's what that's the monetary unit there. Um, so it's it's maize flour predominantly, but it's also uh, peanuts and uh, soy pieces, and then sugar, uh, all ground together to form a porridge, which is you know high protein, high energy. It gives them what they need to be able to go to school and actually learn. Uh, I was asked ask, asked the question yesterday at Southside. Um, you know, what's the most important need that you have in Malawi? And we've wrestled with this question, mm. but I really believe the most important need is the n nutrition, mm. uh, because without it, they can go to school all day long, but but it's it's not going to be a good return on investment if they're sitting there preoccupied about how hungry they are. Yeah. So yeah. we we're really trying to focus on the nutrition. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's great. I, I'm glad you guys are doing that. Uh, real quick question. Um, let me see. Oh yes. I th actually, this is going to bring me to my last question. Um, this is how do you see now that you're on furlough you're going uh, from church to church you know talking to people how is it and first of all before i ask you i i ask my children this question um about once a week um and they kind of look at me like you know like and they have to really think about it so this question is designed to make you think uh but it's a good question and i think everybody should ask themselves on a daily basis because it trains our eyes to look at God's kingdom and how it's working actively. So here's your question. How do you see Jesus at work right now while you're on furlough, John? Yeah, so, um, you know, this process of, of going to different people's houses, getting, um, getting to know uh, the church on an individual level mm -hmm. is 
is really humbling and i see i see the lord in it i really do I, I, he obviously as the owner of the cattle on a thousand hills could provide us instantly with buildings and you know the plans and and certainly all the resources that we would need to do his work we believe that we believe he's going to do it but he doesn't he's not instantaneously providing and it's made me wonder and as i've i've asked him i've considered it i've meditated on it mm -hmm. something happens when we're sitting you know, in your living room, Nathan, uh, and we're talking about the nature of a, of a, of a mission that is life-changing, life-saving, um, you know, we kind of lose our identity, uh, our narcissistic identity, I should say, you know, uh, what I like, what, what, you know, what's important to me. We, we transport ourselves to a place that's so much more godly when we're both focusing on other people and the welfare of other people. And the relationship that's formed in that is a beautiful thing. And I see it happening. Yeah. It's, it's really something that brings people together. And it's no longer about skin color or, you know, uh, party lines or, or, you know, political discussions. With, there is none of that. And I think that may mm -hmm. be why James says it's pure and undefiled, because it is so, uh, it is, it is so focused on, helping oppressed people and taking ourselves out of it yeah so I, I see god in that every time i get in somebody's living room and i'm getting to know them and this and the conversation shifts to the mission in, in malawi well i love what what paul says at the end of galatians after he lists the fruits of the spirit and he says against these there's no law there's no law against these you know um if you were to practice uh helping orphans and widows anywhere, even people who who don't help with that and and might even see it as uh, maybe even see it as a waste of time, they cannot look at it and say, "Well, they're hurting people." You know, it's a good work. It's something that is helping people actively. And mm -hmm. I think whenever people see that, there are so many things. I don't I don't know if you remember nine eleven. Uh, I'm sure you do. Sure. Uh, when 9/11 happened in the United States, churches were full. You know, churches got filled up right after that because people saw uh, a difficult time, and it brought people together. You know, yes, tragedies on immense levels like that bring people together, but also human need when it is uh, seen for what it is, uh, unadulterated. Children yeah. hungry, people hungry, uh, wanting to learn. When people see that, they look at it and they see that need and they come together. And it's yeah. amazing. You're exactly right. They don't think about skin color. They don't think about uh, the party lines that you're talking about. All that stuff fades away, which really yeah. should minister to us about why Christ called us to be a light to people, to yeah. go and help people. Because when you're being Christ... It, you just don't think about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, that's one of the reasons why we're, you know, I have an agenda to invite as many people as will come to see it for themselves. Because, mm -hmm. um, well, for one, it's, it's very encouraging to our family. But I think beyond that, it is, um, it's life-altering to see it firsthand and to hold them. And to, to the, the babies, I mean, and, and the, yeah. the young kids. And to just experience it on a very face-to-face -face personal level so that it's not objectified it's not something that is just over there uh out of sight out of mind um we're really wanting pe i think it's life-changing it has been yeah. for our family just to, to see it to witness it to be a part of it uh, i think a, a two-week trip for 900 bucks and i'll go ahead and plug it you know an air an airline ticket was 900 dollars this time and now they'll fluctuate but for $900 to be able to go over there uh, for a week or so, two weeks if you could, um, and change your life, that would you spend 900 bucks to change your life uh, in the direction of the Lord? Sure, uh, sure, anybody would. Yeah. Um, but sometimes the lotus flower, you know, here in the states where we're so busy, and every moment is seems to be just um, taken up with with stuff. Yeah, um, it would. I know it's a tough decision to make. I know it's a, a lot to step step away from work and and obligations to family and and everything else. But again, the payoff. Mm. Uh, I don't think we can put a number on it. Yeah, 
Yeah. When I think uh, when you when you're talking about that, you're not talking about that academically. You're not talking about that uh, idealistically. Uh, John, you're talking about that from firsthand experience because right. you guys yeah. have done that, so you understand that. And I think when people see this, they should they should understand that about you that you're not talking uh, from a place of ignorance. You're talking from a place of personal experience. Uh, well, when we went to, and it may be too much for, I'll be honest, I, I think it would have been too much for our family. When we went to Brazil, for instance, for the first time when we moved there, it, it was, it was shocking. Uh, just the third world experience, the level of poverty, uh, the, the day to day challenges that came with, you know, not having the amenities that we're accustomed to here in the United States. Um, and I had, uh, the Lord's a very wise God. He, he stair stepped me towards Africa. I could have never handled what we've experienced. And if this mission were to cut short today, if we weren't go to go back today, I would be forever changed because of this year that I've spent with these people. Mm -hmm. So I'll never be able to go back through the door that the Lord has walked me through. And I'm not sorry about that. I'm, I'm very grateful for it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I think that, uh, you and your family are doing good work and I'm, I'm glad that you, uh, well, I'm glad that you were able to be with us here today, and I hope people watch this video. And I just want to say that uh, uh, while I got you on here, um, that uh, if you guys, you know, if you do give money to Malawi work, you are giving it to a, a good place uh, uh, because you are helping, quite honestly, feed widows and orphans and you are helping them get the nutrition in their body so that when they go to school they're not sitting there while the pe person is teaching going oh my stomach is just so empty right now because i've right. seen that as a school teacher I've, I've worked in a low-income school and there were occasionally kids that uh, for some whatever reason in a public school setting everybody gets to eat and there was still occasionally a situation where i had a kid who was not getting fed at home. And we're talking uh, for uh, dinner. And so they'd show up. And though the school offered breakfast in the morning, they'd show up and they wouldn't have that. And men, they can't concentrate. The kids can't no. concentrate when they don't eat. Um, well, we, we can't. You know, we, we can't, Nathan. And, and, and we have, I'll just share this quickly. Uh, but, uh, you know, Snowden and Dennis are part of my team there. You, you know them a little bit. If you see, if you yeah. follow our Facebook or our blog, you'll see their, a little bit of their history. There was a time where uh, we were trying to gr uh, grind up some maize flour, um, and you have to have electricity to do that. Yeah. So I had asked them to, to you know, get that prepared. We're, we, we need to always have it on hand, the feeding program. It's every day, so you have to keep this thing seven days a week. There is no day off for it. Mm-hmm. Well, they went up, and I said, how did, how did the kids do this morning at the, at the program? He said, well, they didn't get fed today because the electricity was out up at the market, so we weren't able to grind up the, the maize flour. Mm. And, uh, and I called them aside, and I said, I said uh, and then, again, please don't think I'm noble here, but the Lord's really pressed upon my heart how important this is. And I said to them, until we get that, that maize flour ground, the three of us are not going to eat. We we will not eat until we get what they need to get to be able to eat. Yeah. And you know they looked they looked at me kind of shocked. Uh, and you got to remember this is much of a, a discipling mission as it is anything else. Sure. I want them to to stop looking at their people with such apathy. Uh, I, I really want them to start seeing the people. You know, uh, Jesus says, do you see this woman? You know, or, uh, it's all about sight with, with him. Do you, do, you, do you see what's going on around you? And, um, you know, they, they really were shocked at the statement. And, you know, it's amazing, Nathan. <laughs> as soon as I said that, it wasn't a few hours later that we got the maze ground up. Mm. If, if we love our neighbor on that level, that the way we love ourselves, the way we take care of ourselves, this is not going to be difficult to raise fifty thousand dollars to put together uh, the beginnings of a of a great work that's going to satisfy a lot of suffering yeah. in in Malawi. So, uh, well, and, for what it's worth, I just felt felt the need to share that. Well, and I think uh, it's important also in Christ. He gives the new commandment. I preached on this yesterday. He says, uh, "Love one another as I loved you." And so it's like an upgrade. It's not just loving your neighbor as yourself. Um, that's what a lot of people forget is that when Paul talks about us uh, being Christians, he says, be like-minded, 
But in other places, he says, think higher of them uh, mm -hmm. than yourself. Esteem them above yourself. And so yeah. that's exactly what you guys were doing, is you were esteeming those people. They're, they're more important than myself, uh, which is why I want to point out, uh, in many cases, in, in, in that kind of occasion, also these people might identify if they see this, oftentimes your ministers and stuff at, at potlucks uh, or the leaders of the church, you'll notice they usually don't get food at the beginning. Yeah. They're waiting for everyone else to eat. Um, and so I, I want to point that out, that it's very important what you're talking about. Uh, and yours, of course, is a much better example than what I gave. Um, because in that occasion, you're feeding the widows and the orphans, and you're preparing everything, and you're essentially saying, no, my hunger pangs are not as important as their hunger pangs. So I'm going to feed them first and take care of theirs first, and then once that's taken care of, then we'll take care of mine. And I, I think that's a great example. I think that's thanks. That's great. Um, well, John, man, as always, thanks. I can't wait till I see you. Uh, I've seen John now a couple times. We got to ride in a car, and I just want to say, um, if John is in a car, you better be careful because he's crazy in that thing. Um, no, we got, we got. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> no, we got, we got there okay, and and it was safe. It's just, you know what? It's for me, it's actually more of a, a, uh, a control thing. Uh, when I see someone else driving, it's like, I'm, I'm just sitting there and you're perfectly fine, but I'm like, you know, you know I'm, I'm thinking about Sherry and, and, and Tom at this point and, and wondering what they're thinking about loading their van. Oh, oh Sherry and Bill. Yeah. Sherry and Bill. Oh, Sherry and Bill. Okay, That's sorry. right. Yeah. No, he's not crazy. He's a good driver. He, he looks both ways and stops completely at every stop sign and waits 15 seconds. Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm going to get a phone call this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Nathan. <laughs> All right. Hey, man, John, thank you so much. I appreciate what you guys do. Y'all be careful, okay? We love you very much. Yeah, we love you all too. Thanks. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you all so much for being with us today. God bless.